yes. Hey guys, it's Will from EDM Tips. Today I'm going to show you how to produce melodic techno in the style of Stefan Bodzin. Now I've had several requests from you guys for Stefan's music over the past few months, so I decided to do it today to include in the In The Style of series that seems to be going down so well with you guys. As usual, you can download this project file completely free and all the samples and presets below this video. So Stefan's music uses a lot of hardware synths, it's lovely and warm, lovely and organic, and I wanted to show you how you could achieve that same organic warmth using just a stock plug in Ableton Live so you don't need any expensive hardware synth stuff like that. So here's what we're going to be covering today in the style of Stefan Bodzin's killer track Singularity. We will be creating that warm organic bass. You can hear it's now opening up that filter with the LFO. It's opening up too much so I'm going to take the amount down here. I'll be showing you how to add organic discrepancies in your drum programming. And I'll be showing you how to make a lovely warm arpeggio sound and how to use polyrhythms to keep that groove going in your music. Uh, we can just duplicate and it's gonna continue that polyrhythm. I'll also be showing you how to get more feeling and movement into your track by using a MIDI keyboard and assigning certain parameters to it. So this is something I haven't really done on one of these videos before. If you don't already, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And if you're interested in more advanced coaching and you're serious about getting signed to some of your favorite labels, such as Anjuna, Spinning Records, Armada, then do check out my eight week EDM production masterclass below this video, because that's exactly what we do. So without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get a kick. I'm gonna dig into the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit for this, and I'm gonna choose kick number, techno kick. Nice and deep, that one I think. Number seven. And let's change this to 121 BPM for that melodic techno tempo. And let's name this bad boy, Stefan Bodzin. Man, those Germans love their techno, don't they? Uh, okay, we are gonna be calling this Vorsprung Dirk Techno. I don't know what that means, but that's what we're calling it because it's my channel and I can call things stupid names. Okay, anyway, let's put a kick on every beat. That's too loud, let's take it down. We don't want any clipping on the master channel. We wanna make sure we've got our gain staging locked tight, gain staging game. Cool, now we are gonna create the bass. Now this track is in, I believe, A sharp minor natural. So we can draw in the bass pattern like this. And we're gonna build this bass sound from scratch, a lovely warm organic bass sound using pretty much the stock plugins from Ableton Live. So here we go, this is the sound we've got. I'm also using this MIDI keyboard from the guys over at Archeria, lovely keyboard. I'll put the link to that below as well because we're gonna be doing some assigning to the knobs a bit later on. So first thing we're gonna do is draw in the scale of A sharp minor. Now if you're using Ableton 11, it's even easier because you can just choose the scale command over here somewhere. Uh, but I'm doing this in Ableton 10 so more people can follow along. And the easiest thing to do is draw in all the white notes from A up to A like so, my template technique. Copy that, duplicate it up an octave and down an octave, so then we've got three octaves in which to work. Select them all, and then we're gonna drag them down so the bottom one, uh, the bottom note is on an A sharp rather than an A. Boom, so we just move it up one semitone. And now we've got the scale of A sharp minor natural. So we can just put these over this to the side of the clip, and then we've got our template so we can draw in those notes. So let's draw in those bass notes. I'm gonna grab these all and put them down an octave actually. So we're working in a lower octave. I'm moving this by 16th and you can see now it's creating a bit of that syncopated rhythm on the bass here when it changes note. And then we go down. So this note, this track singularity is basically two chords. It's the F sharp <coughs> minor and then the A sharp minor, which is the root note of the track. And then the second time that bass comes through, there is a one extra note 
So let's just go in there and program that in. And again, I've got this folded, so it's just using the scale. And let's just put the extra note in there. And this allows lots of movement between the octaves and the bass line, which just adds more interest to the track. But let's get that sound created. We want that lovely, rich, organic sound. This is how you do it. So let's just loop here, and we're going to build this out. We'll keep the sine wave, I think, because it makes a good solid uh, sub bass. I might take it down all down one octave, actually. Listen how lovely and deep that is. Almost losing it out on the bottom there. Uh, and then we're going to add a second oscillator, which is going to be a saw wave. So really deep and bassy. But what we want to do is create that kind of brassy sound for this instrument. And then we're going to start building in the kind of organic sounds to it as well. The first thing we're going to do is go over to the matrix. We're going to hit frequency there. And we want this to be assigned to envelope two. So if we take this down, we can see this envelope here is now going to be controlling this filter. So let's make it take a minute to come in by increasing the attack. Not a minute, but a few milliseconds. And we'll take the decay and the sustain as well and tweak that. So we've got that brassy sound already. Didn't take, a, didn't take long at all. Let's open up this so we can see what's going on a bit more. Uh, it's the exact same controls, but just laid out in an easier fashion. Next thing we're going to do is we're also going to assign LFO1 to that frequency filter there. And that's just going to give a constant kind of ebb and flow. So you can hear it's now opening up that filter with the LFO. It's opening up too much, so I'm going to take the amount down here. And I'm going to increase the rate slightly. So that just adds a little bit more organic movement to it, which is great. Next thing we're, well, actually, using Serum would probably be better than Wavetable because we could add some Portamento, which you can't do uh, in this synth. You can add some glide, but only if the notes overlap each other, and we don't want to do that because we need them to re-trigger each time. If you want more information on all that stuff, then check out my masterclass because we go into everything you need to know. Um, but now let's warm this up a bit even more. What we're going to do is use a saturator, and that's just going to add some more harmonics in the upper frequencies. So let's go saturator, push the drive, take the output down, otherwise it's just going to be really loud. So you can hear it's adding some harmonics. That's where it was. That's too much. Cool. Now what we're going to do is add a little bit of Super Spice. Now I'm going to go to my auxiliary channels, which are here. I've got these ones already set up initially, but let's just get rid of them and start building them out from scratch. So this is going to be our bass delay. Let's just call that bass del. And I'm going to use for this example lots of the Echo plugin. If you want to learn how to use Echo completely, you can click the link on this video wherever it is. I've done an in-depth tutorial on it. But it's basically a delay plugin in Ableton that is nice and organic sounding. So let's just 100% wet because it's on an auxiliary channel. Let's pipe that bass to the auxiliary channel, turn the feedback down, and then get some stereo going on. And let's take out the low end because we don't want too much bass in the stereo frequencies. And it just adds space and interest to that bass line already. But what we're going to do is actually make this richer than the bass sound on the actual track singularity. And what we're going to do is duplicate, this is kind of professor stuff now, we're going to group that wavetable and the saturator together. And what we are going to do is open this up. I'm going to duplicate this. 
Um, I'm going to create a fifth, and this is an important thing that Ben Bowman does this as well. If you've got a fifth running above uh, your bass line, then it just creates a different feel to it. So let's turn off this sub bass on our second one. Let's just name it so we can understand what's going on. Let's call this the fifth. So these are two separate synths, but they're grouped together as one instrument in Ableton. And let's call this root. So for the fifth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase these semitones to 19. Now, you might think that's a random amount, but 24 would be two octaves. That's 24 semitones. And what I'm doing is now taking it down so it's, se it's seven semitones above the first octave. You know, so um, it's, it would be the equivalent of drawing this note like an octave higher, plus five, se plus seven semitones, which would take it to the fifth interval. So you can hear it makes that chord. So you'll start to recognize that sound now, but we want to soften this down a bit. It's too loud, it's too brash. We just want this to kind of add a little bit of interest. So what I'm going to do is add some unison just to the fifth, and that's going to fatten it out a bit, make it a bit smoother, a bit more stereo. So this is off, and this is on. And when I show you what we're going to do with this keyboard, we're going to have loads of control over this. But that's pretty much the bass line. The last thing I'm going to do is add this cool new plugin uh, called Thickify. Uh, I usually I use the Ableton plugins, but this is a really nice plugin from the guys over at Rocket Powered Sound. So uh, I just downloaded it the other day. You can get it below this video as well. Um, let's look for Thickify. And what I'm going to do is put this on the bass after both of the, after the entire instrument. So if we minimize that instrument, both synths are now being summed into this thickify. And it's got a, kind of a bit like Sausage Fatner, but it's got more controls uh, and sounds a bit different too. So let's just boost it up a bit. So we're just adding more harmonics, gelling it together, and that's the kind of thing you have to do to get that organic sound when you are just using um, soft synths rather than real hardware synthesizers. Cool, so now let's work on the arc, the arpeggio, and I'm using my magic list here. So let's build this out, and let's go arp. Again, I'm gonna use the same pattern as, much, as well as I can remember it at least, as in Stefan's track, Singularity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the analog synth here, um, just to change things up a bit. And let's firstly draw in this syncopated arpeggio pattern. Now you could do the same template technique. I'm not gonna bother because uh, I wanna be as quick as I can. So let's choose sixteenths as the interval lengths. Now, I don't know if these are the exact notes, but um, yeah, they'll do for now anyway. Now, what I'm going to do is create a syncopated rhythm that is like a polyrhythm. So if we copy this, just like this, so you can see I've selected six sixteenths rather than, you know, eight sixteenths, and I'm just going to duplicate it, and that's going to drift in and out of time and create its own rhythm. So on its own, it sounds like this. Now when the kick comes in, you'll hear it's like a polyrhythm. And it gives that grooving forward motion, which is, you know, very co common in a lot of techno music, especially melodic techno. But let's start getting this sound a bit better now. We're going to tone it down a bit. Let's take down the frequency. Let's take down the amplitude. Actually, what we're going to do is make this kind of a bit more spacey and airy. So we need to increase the release, which means that this no each note takes longer to die out. So you can hear 
It's still dying out because I've increased the release to 3.5 seconds. Increase the release, baby! And let's increase the release and sustain on the envelope for the filter as well. And we've got a second oscillator here as well, another saw wave. I'm just going to detune the first oscillator and the second slightly to create a richer, more um, detuned, thicker feel. We could even add a little bit of unison if we wanted. I don't think it's necessary though. So let's add some reverb to that, make it really nice and airy. Again, let's add a secondary auxiliary channel. Let's call this ARP Reverb. Nice and original, that's how we like it. And then let's just throw on a bog standard reverb, just to be quick, with a nice long decay time, and feed some of that ARP in. Okay, we need to bump up the volume of that reverb. So let's throw in a utility on. Increase the gain and the decay time. We could even make the second one a different waveform. So I've changed the second oscillator to a square, which sounds pretty cool. So all together, Don't forget you can download this as well below this um, project. Below this video, what's going on? I don't know, probably didn't sneak well enough. All right, ARP, ARP, cyan, the natural color of synths, as you know. Leave me a comment, let me know if you're enjoying this so far. And we are gonna get on to creating some warm organic drums now. Now again, if you're creating techno or any style of music with hardware instruments, hardware samplers, hardware synths, there's a lot of slight discrepancies and idiosyncrasies built into the sound that gives it a warm feeling. That's what we're trying to achieve today, but just by using soft synths. So we've got our drums here. Let's just program some in. I'm gonna show you some really cool tips that I've never shared before. So let's get a hat. Now I'm not gonna use a closed hat, I'm gonna use an open hat, and then I'm gonna tweak it so it works as a closed hat temporarily, and I'll show you why again. So we've got this 808 open hat sound. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and let's just program in 16th beats. I think that would be like this. And obviously that sounds like a bit of a horrible mess. So let's tweak it, let's build in some interest to this. Now what I would do if I was using Ableton 11 is I'd randomize the velocities but instead I'm just gonna tweak them slightly here. So they're all slightly different. And again, this is, the velocity is automatically assigned to the uh, volume. And if I just do six like that rather than eight and then duplicate it, it's again going to create more of a random feel as that's a polyrhythm as well, the different velocities. And now we're gonna tweak the sound to be how we want. So if we go to the sample, and let's change it to classic mode. And now we can use the decay and sustain. So what I've done is I've just taken the sustain down and the decay, so now it's just a very short sound. And we're gonna use this to our advantage a bit later on. But let's add some more organic warmth to this sound, more variation. So what we're gonna do is add an, another echo plug-in, and this is to use it in quite a creative way. First, let's add a bit more high-end to this, actually, because it's lacking high-end. You can see it's got all this low-end as well. It's completely unnecessary. Let's just boost the high-end a bit. And now we've got the echo unit. What we're going to do is change it so that it's just making the sound of the hi-hat just ebb and flow slightly in pitch in timbre, which will add more of a natural acoustic, not acoustic, but analog feel. 
So I've taken the feedback right down to zero. And I'm gonna take the decay time to be on the 16th, so the same as the original hi-hat sounds. Turn it to ping pong. So you can hear already we've got a little bit of stereo feel. But now I'm gonna tweak the delay slightly off time which is gonna make it sound like it's playing a slightly softer because you're, we're blurring the transients. And let's add some character as well, with some wobble, which is gonna wobble the pitch. Just a bit though, we don't wanna do it too much. So this is, how, this is where we were before. And this is where we are now. You know, it's just a slight difference, but this is the kind of thing that will make your music sound more organic, more, yeah, more warm. <laughs> um, next, let's get some claps on the go. So I'm gonna go to my samples, my trusty sample kit. I will go to claps. And what claps have we got? We have got, those new tech ones are pretty good. Yep, that one will do. I've actually got the one that I chose written down. So that would be the eight actually, this one. So let's put this on every other kick, standard. Uh, like so, duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Take it down in volume. And we're gonna blur the beginning slightly. It's a little bit too crisp. I've just increased the fade in, which is like the attack very, 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 very slightly. And now we're gonna program in our own delay to that. Now what you want to do is be using the 16ths again. That's really where drums live and create a groove within those 16ths. So we can, so we can add a second clap there, take it down in volume by tweaking the velocity. We can have another one there. I'm not sure exactly what the pattern is within Singularity, but this will do. I think it's probably this. And now we're gonna add more interest to those drums as well, just by adding a bit more um, variation. I'm gonna add a second clap. I'm gonna use one of my favorite claps, which is a classic 909. Uh, here we go. And we're gonna add this on every other beat, every other clap. I'm going a bit in depth here, but you know, hopefully you'll learn some cool new tricks. So now we've got two layers of clap. But what I want to do is add some reverb to just this clap. Now if you open up this routing button here, you can see here I've, what I did was create return chains and I've got these two return chains within the drum rack. What you can do from this um, drop down menu is now select any of your global return tracks. Now I'm gonna create another one for, I could just feed it to the same ARP reverb actually. I might try that. That might, that might do the job. So let's choose, re let's get rid of this one. Choose that. Choosing the ARP reverb. And now I can actually feed in some of this clap to the reverb. But I want to I want to blur this dance clap slightly as well to make it a bit less um, yeah a bit less crisp. So I'll increase the attack slightly. Actually, I'll do it with the in the one shot mode because then you can see with the fade what's happening. Let's turn off the main clap. So you can hear. That's where it was, really crisp. I'm just softening that clap slightly. And what you could also do is move it slightly before the beat and that's gonna just blur those transients even more. And let's just duplicate that. So it's on every other one of those claps, like so. I'll 
I'll have to check this against the original track, but... Next thing, what are we gonna do? Next we are gonna do, ooh, that's interesting. Let's add some floor toms, much like the original track. So what I'm gonna do is go to samples and make this, yeah, a bit more interesting, make this groove a little bit more interesting. So we will go to toms. That one will do. We can, we can get rid of this return section now. We just need to be able to use the send control here within drum rack so we can just hide all that other stuff so here we got a tom let's just turn it down a bit and add some of those rumbly toms in on again on the 16th and i'm going to do a real you know differentiation in velocities for these so it kind of fades in and out I'm just using the command uh, key to be able to slide those individual velocities up and down. That's here now. Now we've got that roll of the tom. What I'm gonna do to add even more variation is go to controls and this random to pan. If we increase this, we'll hear that the tom will actually pan randomly a little bit. Not too much. So there's just another interesting way to add some random organicness to your drums. You know, we could actually feed a little bit of this um, to a, an echo. So what I could do is put Let's just create one for the drums. Let's go drum echo and color this green so we can see it's for the drums. Then I'm gonna add another echo device on there. And I'm not sure what settings it should be yet, but this is probably a good one for drums. And what we're gonna do is again, go to our drum rack and set up the same idea that we did before. So we'll open that, open that, right click, create return chain, boom, choose the drums. Close it all up so it hides, and now we can send some of this to our echo, our drum echo. You can hear it echoing off there. So let's add ping pong. So again, it's just adding more interest. We're gonna add some reverb to that echo as well. Just to soften the transients on the delays. And let's add a floor Kong, a conga as well. Congo, conga, conga is a country. So, yeah, Democratic Republic. Democratic Republic of Congo. Right, let's get the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's what we're working with. Yeah, we want the 808 conga. That one will do. So let's put this on there and we're gonna tune it to the track as well. Okay, well, so much for no edits. Halfway through yesterday, my mic stopped working, which I found out about half an hour after finishing the video. So now I actually have to record the second half. So this is an edit, but it's okay. You can still comment, let me know if you're enjoying it. Give me a hell yeah or an amen, brother. And yeah, it's a fresh day, so I've got a fresh head. Let's carry on. Actually, the next bit I'm gonna show you, or very shortly, needs these knobbledy knobs on top of this keyboard. So I'm gonna move the camera slightly. There we go, so you can see. Okay, so we're changing the aspect slightly. Let's continue. Now, where did we get to? We got to the floor tom, didn't we? So let's get back into our drums. I've got the conga. I was just about to tune it, so I've tuned it to the track. I've just dropped it by two uh, semitones. So let's program that into our drums and just adds another little bit of interest to the rhythm. Uh, I'll just add some more of these, con these toms as well. I know this isn't in the same place as in Singularity, but you know, it's just to show you how you can quickly copy and paste stuff. 
to add more interest. Okay, now I've heard that these ARPs are stopping there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend this clip, go in, and again, grab six of those sixteenths. So you can see one, two, three, four, and then the two blank ones. And you can see up here, we've now got six of these sixteenths selected, which means we can just copy, uh, we can just duplicate, and it's gonna continue that polyrhythm. Um, lovely. But what we're gonna do is, and I just covered this in our, my masterclass call last night, actually. So I'm gonna drop down these top notes. just to make things a bit more interesting. Okay, now this is what I wanted to show you with my knobbledy knobs, as it were. Uh, I think I'm on that stage yet. Oh no, first we've got some white noise percussion. Now again, I know that Stefan uses that, this in his track. I'm not listening to his track right now, so I can't, you know, determine exactly what the pattern is and all of that, but I'm gonna show you how you can use white noise to make your own drums. So let's just colour this green, the natural colour of drums, and the natural colour of plants as well, I learnt at school. So now we will grab a synth. I'm just going to use the operator, nice and simple. I'm going to choose the wave as white noise. Now it doesn't matter which notes you program these uh, percussive elements in, because white noise is atonal, so it sounds the same at any pitch. Let's just turn it down a bit. What I'm gonna do is actually, I'm just going to copy this floor tom pattern. Make sure I select right to the end there. And the reason I'm gonna do that is just so the white noise is almost like a layered drum on top of that. You can hear it's just a noise at the moment. So what we're gonna do is just loop that bit so we can work on it. And we can see we've already got this velocity programmed in because we programmed that in for the floor tom and we're gonna use that. So I'm gonna go here and we're gonna make this into percussion. Now if you think of a drum being hit, there's a very fast transient, the whack, and then it dies off very quickly. And we're gonna follow that shape with our ADSR settings here, the attack, decay, sustain and release. So let's go to the envelope. We're gonna take the sustain right down, and you can see here, it's gonna die off quite quickly. Let's go back and just listen to that. So that, that's our white noise, and it kind of sounds like a hat. Simple as that. Now we could extend that slightly and make it take longer to die out. I quite like that. And then what we can do is we can control how it sounds by assigning some of, uh, well, either the filter cutoff or the volume to the um, velocity changes. So what I'm gonna do is apply the filter. So I'll just select this section here, filter, then frequency of that filter to velocity. Let's assign that. And if we take this frequency down here, we'll start to hear the difference. We can hear that as that velocity gets harder, the filter opens up. And again, we're just doing it subtle because we, um, yeah, we don't want it to be too over the top. And then we're gonna apply some of this drums echo too, just on the auxiliary channel. So that's just gonna add interest to our drums. So let's have a quick listen to that before we move on. Again, just another layer, another element of interest now I wanna show you the knobbledy knob bits. This is where we are going to start acting as though we've got a, uh, an external hardware synth, because it's all very well programming in automation, but it's quite fun to actually play with this stuff. I need to turn this on again, actually. Um, so once again, thanks to the guys at Archeria for sending me this MIDI keyboard. It's the Keylab 61 Essential. Um, it's really good, basically. The only thing that I would say is it doesn't have weighted keys. I suspect that their more, slightly more expensive version of the key lab does have weighted keys. I personally prefer weighted keys because it feels more like a piano. But if you're on a budget, this is a good buy. So let's go to the bass and we are gonna start creating these 
assignments, MIDI assignments to these um, MIDI controller knobs. So what you want to do is open up this macro control first. And because remember we've got two synths within this instrument, we've got the root note synth and the fifth synth, um, we want to control both of those simultaneously. So the first thing we're going to do is assign the frequency cutoff to one of these macros on both synths. So we can press map, click on the frequency, map it to macro one, turn off map, go to the other synth, press map, select the same frequency control and assign that. So now both synths have their frequency cutoff assigned to this. And we can hear that here. If we just control it. Lovely jubbly. And the other th parameter that we want to assign, I mean, you could assign loads, you know, like, like on a real synth, <clears throat> but I'm gonna just assign a few of them. The second one I'm gonna assign is the envelope for the filter. Because you remember this slightly slow attack creates that brassy sound. What I'm gonna do is map that to the second macro on both synths. Map, attack, there we go, map attack. And now, The other thing we could assign, and I, I didn't actually think to do this, but if we wanted to tone down that LFO wobble a bit, you know, we could assign map amount as well. So we can go back to LFO one, and this is making it go whoa, 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 whoa. So we can kind of turn that down and up by assigning both of those here. And now let's listen. And the last thing I'm gonna control with the macro is the volume of this fifth synth. Because it's nice having the fifth, but it would be nice if it can ebb and flow um, throughout the track. So that's completely off. So all we're gonna do is map that volume there to this macro here. And now we've got All these different controls. Now this is the fun bit where we're going to assign them to these MIDI knobs. So what we can do is press Command and M. You've got to make sure you set it all up beforehand of course. Oh they're already assigned because I did it yesterday before my mic cut off. Please, please don't let my mic be cut off now. That would be so annoying. Um, so I'm just going to delete those, remove the mapping. Um, is that... Oh no, I think I did, did a bad thing. Okay. That's cool. Right, edit, edit MIDI map. Choose Command M, wiggle your thingy. Choose another one, wiggle the thingy. Choose another one, wiggle the thingy. Choose another one, wiggle the thingy. All thingies wiggled, lovely. So let's turn it off and just wiggle those thingies. So now let's have a listen to what happens with that bass. If you play your track, you can record that automation at the same time. So you've got this little plus here, which means overdub. If you turn this, if, if this isn't on and you arm your track and you press record, you're going to record over the actual MIDI notes. So we want to be recording the automation over the MIDI notes that we've already programmed in because we like them, right? So press the overdub button and then we can record those automations. So now if we look at our automation lines, you can see we've got all these different automations in that we just recorded. You can see this little button here has come on. That means that there's already automation programmed within the clip. So if we, change, if we turn this off, it goes back to the automation within the arrangement view. Now let's listen to it. Mm -hmm. 
Something else we could automate as well, which is quite fun. If we go into the second synth, uh, let's go into the clip. We'll open up this envelope thing. That clip automation that was recorded, that's what happened yesterday. I did that yesterday and I had to try and roll back this project to get to the point I was before my mic cut out. Um, but if we choose down here, and it's, it's similar in Ableton 11, it's not exactly the same, but you choose which instrument you want to automate the parameter of. Here we're going to choose oscillator to transpose, and then we're going to create a similar effect that is in one of the parts of Singularity as well. Again, I haven't listened to it since yesterday morning, so. But here we can create some crazy discordant um, pitch bend. So yeah, it can be quite fun. You can automate all of that as well. Um, or you could even assign the, uh, you could probably assign a pitch control to, the, to one of these knobs as well. And again, that just gives you more control over the whole thing when you're automating it. Right, that's pretty much it, I think. I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Don't forget, we go into way more stuff than this in my eight-week EDM production masterclass. We've got coaching, we've got weekly feedback. We help, we've helped students get signed to some of the world's biggest labels like Spinin, Armada, and Juno. Uh, yeah, it's really for people who are serious about their music production. So if that does sound like you and you want to get signed to your favorite label in 2022, you can click the link below, find out more about it. Don't forget you can download this project completely free below this video as well. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. And until next time, cheers and happy producing. Thank you.